Let me ask you this. What if you could get all the power of these GLP-1 medications and all you had to do was inject it once a month? Would you want it? No weekly reminders, no fridge full of pens, just one injection once a month, that's it, and losing upwards of potentially 20% of your baseline weight. Does it sound too good to be true? Well, say hello to Mary DeBart Cafraglutide. Now, everybody in the industry is currently calling it Maritide, which makes sense because I think if we say that more than once, we're probably going to summon some kind of demon. But besides the name and it sounding like some kind of rejected Marvel villain, this medication might be the next big game changer, especially for people who struggle with adherence and remembering to take a once weekly injection or hate injections altogether if it's only got to be done once a month. And today we're breaking down Maritide, how it works, what it does, and what the current phase two trials are showing in terms of weight loss data. Oh, and don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you are here for no BS science-backed insights and want to continue hearing me mispronounce drug names. Did you know that keeping your Wagovi or Zepbound pens at the right temperature while traveling isn't optional, it's essential? These are temperature sensitive medications and if they get too hot, too cold, or end up freezing, well, that is game over for those medications and they're no longer going to be effective for you. And that is where the For All Families travel coolers come in. There are two models in particular that I recommend. First up is the Voyager, which is their bigger model, but it can provide continuous refrigeration via USB power or a biogel ice pack that is TSA approved. And they also have their Nomad model that's a little bit smaller, a little bit sleeker, sexier, and can carry one or two pens, but it'll keep your meds good and cool for 28 to 30 hours, which is perfect for those weekend getaways. And because you are one of my amazing viewers, if you use the code DANB10, you're going to get 10% off your order at ForAllFamily.com. Again, that's DANB10 at ForAllFamily.com for 10% off your order. The link and everything that you need are all down below in the description. So be sure to travel with peace of mind and stop risking your medications. So what the hell is Maritide? Well, it is indeed a once monthly GLP-1 based medication, but it has a bit of a plot twist. It not only activates GLP-1, like that found in Wagovi and Ozempic, but it also has a role with GIP, similar to Zepbound, except the way it's different from Zepbound, Zepbound activates GIP, whereas Maritide ends up blocking GIP altogether. Now, before we get too much further, let's back things up a little bit. As I said, medications like Ozempic or Wagovi activate GLP-1. What happens when we activate GLP-1 is we get a reduction in appetite, our digestion gets slowed down, and our insulin sensitivity improves. All of which ultimately helps us to achieve a calorie deficit, which then helps us to lose weight. Then came Zepbound, aka Tirzepatide, aka Maugero, which decided to add in GIP to the mix. And for a lot of people, Zepbound works like a hot damn. It's kind of like slapping a performance chip onto your metabolism. That is, if the wiring and everything like that still works well. But Maritide flips the script a little bit. Yes, it activates GLP-1, like Zepbound, like Wagovi, but it blocks GIP. And this is what we call GIP antagonism. And it is the feature, not a bug. But before we can really dive into what exactly is going on with GIP and why one drug activates it and one blocks it and how they both can lead to weight loss, we need to understand what does GIP do under normal body function. You see, GIP, or glucose insulinotropic polypeptide, is a gut hormone that's released when you eat a meal, in particular a meal that has more carbs and fats in it. And in healthy individuals, GIP is actually a fat storage hormone. It helps your body to release more insulin in order to bring your blood sugar levels down, which means sugar is going from the bloodstream to inside of your cells. It helps your fat cells better take up fat so that they can store it for later use. And it might have a small, small role in terms of slowing down your digestion. Now, all of these things are really, really great if you're living 30,000 years ago and worried about a famine, but it's not so great when we've got Uber Eats on speed dial. Now, when it comes to obesity or insulin resistance, Yep, gets, well, a little bit sketchy. 
When it's all on its own, it's still really good at storing fat, but it becomes less effective at helping us to regulate our blood sugar levels and helping with regulation of insulin. And it might even cause an increase in your hunger signaling, making you hungrier and wanting to consume more food. Basically, GIP is initially that friend that comes over to help, but then ends up sticking around and just sits on your couch and eats your chips all day. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Zepbound activates GIP, but yet Zepbound is more effective than Mogovi at helping you to lose weight. And if GIP all on its own does all these fat storage things, how does all of this frickin' work? Trust me, you are not the only one that's confused, and I would like to say that we have this all perfectly laid out and figured out, but we don't have all of the exact nuances, so what I'm gonna give you is kind of what we have already, and generally, what are some of the big theories that are going on with all of these different molecules and how we can activate and block and still get the same result. So when it comes to tirzepatide, aka Zepbound, it's not just turning GIP on and getting GIP to do GIP things, it's actually retraining GIP, if you will. You can think of GIP kind of like a remote control. It has good buttons where it can boost insulin and help you to burn fat, and it has bad buttons where it can cause you to store fat and make you hungrier. When it comes to tirzepatide, it helps you to actually push only the good buttons, which ultimately gives us the results we want in helping us to manage blood sugars and to help us lose weight. And this is what we call biased agonism. Meanwhile, Maritide just yanks the batteries out of that remote control altogether and just says, we can't use this remote at all and we're just gonna shut it off. Both approaches help to fix the broken signaling. One just is retraining or giving us the results that we ultimately want, and the other is just saying, nope, we're just not gonna deal with it altogether. And yes, both lead to weight loss. And of course, on top of all of this, things get really weird when we add in the GLP-1 component and look at the results that it has, and it seems to have a effect in terms of activating what's gonna happen with GIP when it's in that context. So yes, human metabolism is weird and it's complex and there's still a lot that we don't know. But now you know why both GIP activation and GIP blockade can work and give us the same result. Now let's look at this phase two randomized double blind placebo controlled trial that was done with Maritide in order to determine its effectiveness in helping people to lose weight both with and without diabetes. What the authors did in this study is they took about 600 individuals, some of them had diabetes, some of them just had obesity, and they ran the trial for a 52 week period and had people on a variety of different doses of Maritide, plus they had some people that were on a placebo. Now for the good stuff. In terms of weight loss, the individuals that didn't have diabetes, what we found is they lost about 12 to 16% of their baseline weight. So baseline weight is whatever weight that they started at in the trial, and 12 to 16% was lost from that baseline weight. The people that had diabetes, what we saw is about an 8 to 12% loss from baseline, and this result is totally expected. We know that people who have diabetes tend to have a blunted response in terms of weight loss from these medications. They just don't lose as much as compared to what we get with individuals that don't have diabetes. I've gone over this in a previous video, but there's a lot of complex and different mechanisms going on, and so the difference in terms of diabetes and no diabetes is totally expected, and yeah, it is still a pretty solid result nonetheless. The other big wins that we saw with Maritide was a significant drop in A1C, upwards of 1.6% in terms of A1C drop. Fat mass decreased by about 37% overall. And there was only about an eight to 11% lean mass loss for these individuals that were in the study. To give you some context, in the Surmount 1 trial, what we saw is that individuals on tirzepatide actually lost about 25% of lean mass in that trial itself. And so eight to 11% sounds pretty darn good. That's like dropping a 30 pound weighted vest off your body and keeping most of that muscle intact. But what about the side effects? Well, no GLP-1 story would be complete without a little bit of GI drama. And Maritide brought the usual suspects, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, heartburn, you name it, it was there, pretty typical for this base of medications. 
Now, the authors did do some interesting things in terms of dose escalation to see what kind of side effects and how many people would drop out due to side effects when they didn't escalate a dose, and there was definitely some prominent results. People who were just given the highest dose right out the gate and said, here you go, enjoy, there was about a 27% dropout, whereas the people that did a dose escalation, so they started at a low dose and worked their way up to the higher dose, there was a much lower dropout rate of about 8%. The moral of the story here is that slow and steady isn't just for the tortoises. It's definitely for your gut too, and so that you can tolerate these medications. Oh, and two people were noted to have passed away in this study, but both the deaths were completely unrelated to the medication. As a quick aside, if you're wondering which GLP-1 medication does what, what is the rate of weight loss, how do they compare to the other GLP-1 medications, and what are the side effects you need to be concerned about, well, I've got something for you. I've put together a super clean, no fluff, one page handout that goes over all of the GLP-1 medications, the major ones that are currently on the market, including Zepbound, Margero, Ozempic, Wagovi, Trulicity, Ribelsis, you name it, I have put it in this handout for you. And best of all, it's free, it's evidence-based, and yes, it is actually easy to read. Just click the link down in the description, enter your email, and I will send it directly to your inbox because you deserve real answers and not more confusion. Now, I do have one slight concern when it comes to these once monthly injections, and that is they're amazing until they're not. You see, if you take this medication and you get hit with some rough side effects, well, those side effects are gonna be hanging out for quite some time. That drug is sticking around longer than your last hinge date, eh? Huh? And yes, it looks like we're gonna be starting low and going slow and working people up to the higher doses, but when it comes to a once monthly injection, we lose a little bit of dose flexibility. So if your body says, nope, we're not feeling this drug, well, you don't get to skip next week's dose and hope for the best. That drug gets to sit there and keep on marinating. So definitely some food for thought and really brings home this point that you need proper supervision and monitoring for the duration of being on this medication and any time that you're making any dosage changes to ensure that you are doing it safely, effectively, and properly. And I'm sure I'll have all kinds of different techniques and strategies available once the drug comes out and how we can get people on the drug, get them stable, and not having any side effects. But Maritide may be a perfect match, especially for those people who struggle with adherence and just want something that they do once a month, it's one and done and they don't have to think about it. For people that maybe have more severe obesity, plus or minus diabetes, maybe they hate needles, these are the, gonna be the kind of people that are probably gonna get the most benefit from being on a once monthly injection. And based on the current data of a phase two trial, we're still a long way away from the drug making it to market as the phase three trials are currently ongoing and those be the one that allow us to get that drug to market. It looks like Maritide is currently almost keeping up with Zepbound, maybe not quite yet and not outpacing it, but it's definitely giving Wagovi the little side eye with one quarter of the injections. So time will tell just how effective and where exactly Maritide is going to fall out in comparison to the current agents we have on the market. Now, I want to hear from you. Would you switch to a once a month shot if you could? Or are you a little bit more concerned about those long acting side effects and what all that is going to mean for you? your body and everything else in between. Drop a comment down below, let me know your thoughts, and let's start a conversation. Oh, and if you're tired of navigating this confusing med landscape all on your own, then you need to check out My Empowerment Hub. This is your go-to resource for science-backed insights that'll help you to lose weight and keep it off, but you also are gonna be joining a community of supportive individuals who have been there, they know your story, and they are there to help you along the way as we all collectively work together to manage our weight and live our happiest and healthiest life. The links and everything that you need are all down below or download the Mighty Networks app and check out Dr. Dan's Empowerment Hub. Come and join us today for the free access portion or you can sign up for the core membership and get access to all the additional goodies that I put out. So if you're ready to start transforming your health and to stop losing your mind, be sure to check it out, and I can't wait to see you there. All right, that is it, and that is all, you beautiful people. I know you love this video, and since you did, don't forget to like and share the video with anybody that you think is going to enjoy it. As well, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you never miss out when I put out another video. As well, check me out on all my other channels, at the official Dr. Dan. And of course, as I always sign off, 
please remember it is those small tweaks that lead to the massive peaks.